here's my money, let's click a load of buttons. Do some research. You've got to be at the top of your game to keep So I think I'm gonna sell the bike, I'm gonna take that money and put it in the margin call, and then that'll give me money to buy. This is how stupid a new well, me as a new trader was, because I was thinking like that money was gonna turn into a new motorcycle. Well, guess what? That motorcycle didn't come back here, okay? It's a big amount of money. It's a, it's a large amount of money in your trading account. Have you noticed a difference in how you feel going into positions, exiting positions, uh, risk management approaches? Has anything altered? Yeah, so I'm taking two weeks off and I'm not trading that account. So I haven't opened a single trade. I'm just waiting. What is it that you have that is going to give you an edge over them. Now, that's hard to develop and it takes time to understand. But that's why I want to challenge you. Instead of just going, yes, I'm going to trade, I'm going to learn to trade, here's my money, let's click a load of buttons, do some research. You've got to be at the top of your game to keep So I think I'm going to sell the bike. I'm going to take that money and put it in a margin call, and then that'll give me money to buy. This is how stupid a new, well, me as a new trader was, because I was thinking like that money was going to turn into a new motorcycle. Well, guess what? That motorcycle didn't come back here. Okay. No, it did not. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to you know, it's a big amount Trade money. Delicious Live. Let's go ahead and transition over. You guys can see me on the drop. It wasn't awesome, bad. The way the song started, I was a little bit nervous of where we were going to end up. Wasn't a bad drop. Wasn't a bad drop. Let's fade it out. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Trade Delicious Live. My name is Jordan. It's an absolute pleasure to be in front of you today. I hope you're all having a fantastic, I'm going to assume, morning. However, we have had a lot of APAC traders come through recently. So maybe you've had a great day. I hope it, wherever you are and whatever time of day it is, I hope you've got a big smile on your face and you're ready for some trade delicious content. If you are here, you can see me, you can hear me, you know the drill, give me a wave. If you haven't already, why haven't you hit that like button? Come on, we're up and running, we're live, we're here, we're here to play. Guys, bit of fun content coming through today. We're gonna start off with a bit of morning coffee as we do. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna have a talk about some of the fundamentals, we're gonna have a talk about the trading charts. Then we're gonna transition into a live trading room with myself. We're gonna do some trading together. Most of you learned what my strategy is yesterday. Well, today we're gonna to utilize it together as a team to trade the markets. Super excited for that. And then finally, Aaron Collier is gonna join us to have a talk about the tech takeover in the banking sector, which we've seen taking hold in recent times. So if you are excited, make sure you let me know, make sure you get those energy levels up in the chat. You get my energy levels. I'm gonna be here by myself for the next hour and 15 minutes. So match my energy. Come with some energy, come with a big smile, come with a nice hot coffee, a hot coffee, ready to trade, and we'll get into it. Enrique, Aurelian, Attila, I hope you all have, what, three just beautifully unique names right there. How do we start off with that? Hello, guys, welcome to Trade Delicious Live. For anyone who's the first time being here, Trade Delicious, we're here to celebrate what it means to be a trader. Along your journey, whether you just started, whether you're a seasoned professional, we understand what it means to be a trader. We come from a proprietary trading firm background. We're here to celebrate it. We're going to do some analysis. We're going to laugh. We're going to joke. We're going to just attempt to bring smiles all around. So I really hope you're excited for it. Other news. First and foremost, the most important news today. Okay. And I'm going to say this is the most important news today. What I found really, really interesting. Tasmania. If I say Tasmania, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Who knows? If you if you don't, I want you to say no in chat right now. If I say Tasmania, do you know what I'm talking about? I'm really curious about this. Nikita, welcome back. I'm glad you've come back to join. I know you asked yesterday if we we're live every time this time. Um, so it's great to have you back. I hope you had a great day yesterday and I hope you had a fantastic night's sleep as well. Devanish, Devanish, am I saying that correctly? Welcome in. Hello to you. I hope your trading is treating you well. 
so does anyone know no you got no idea what i mean by tasmania okay so tasmania laurie you know what tasmania is fantastic tasmania is a small state here in australia it's a little island state just off the south coast of australia um i'm going to tell you this news and you're all just going to go jordan why on earth are you telling me this because i don't care Aurelian knows the Tasmanian devil. It's where it originated. Uh, Tasmania have just announced they're going to be having a new AFL team join the AFL season, which is really exciting. Now, half of you are going to sit there and say, Jordan, what the hell is AFL? <laughs> and I'm well and truly aware that that's what's going to happen. So you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to show you. Uh, how, how easy is it going to be to show you what AFL is? If you haven't seen AFL before, it's like a mix between rugby and Gaelic football, okay? We're right in the mix there, but um, yeah, Janika, you're right. It's in Australia. It's just off the south coast of Australia, but there's a bit of local news coming from Melbourne. We do have a new uh, AFL team that's going to be joining the season, hopefully very soon. Football, uh, Laurie, if you're Australian, yes, footy. Uh, if you're not Australian, if you're American, no because you're going to be thinking American football. Uh, if you're European, no, because you're going to be thinking soccer. <laughs> uh, football is a very universal term, isn't it? Everyone uses football for whatever they want to call their favorite sport. So, I mean, even rugby gets called footy. If you guys don't know, I'm wearing a rugby top right now, the, the beautiful Melbourne Storm. Anyway, maybe they learn something today, a new sport. If you haven't heard of AFL, it is a... Very thrilling local sport here in Australia. It's a nationwide sport. Uh, very new to the nationwide, should I say. Maybe in the last 50 years, it really started branching out nationwide uh, from Victoria. But it is a fantastic sport to watch. And it always generates a great atmosphere. Speaking of generating a great atmosphere, do we have some fundamental data tonight? FOMC, federal funds rate coming out expected. 25 basis points. Where do we think that's, guys? Do, uh, are we just agreeing with the analysts here? Does anyone have a wild, out-of-left-field pitch on where this FOMC release might come through? We're expecting a 25 basis point hike. We did see the RBA yesterday hike more than what they were expected. Are we going to see a similar thing come out of the FOMC? What are you guys' thoughts? How are you feeling moving into this federal funds rate? How are you positioned, more importantly? If you think I'm talking another language now, as I say FOMC and, and hiking these rates, and you have open positions in the US dollar today, just be very, very careful. It's going to get rocky. It's going to get volatile, okay? And we'll dive in a little bit more what I mean by that momentarily. But we have some big, big, big news coming out for the US economy the interest rate decision coming through the FOMC. So let's keep an eye on that throughout today and see where we come forward. I, I honestly, I've got no idea where uh, where we're going to be coming. <laughs> I've got no idea if they're going to come in at 25 basis points, if they're not going to hike at all, if they're going to come in at 50 basis points. I have no idea. Leaning towards to join the analyst because it's the safest bet. Most people do go and predict the safest bet, but where we actually come through, let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Just make sure you stay hydrated throughout today's stream. Very important. And we're going to get into some live trading. We're going to have a look at what opportunities we can try and pick from the market. We're going to do some of the analysis on your guys' trades. And we're going to have a very open communication route between you and I. Yes, you. Wherever you are in the world. Even if you're not talking in chat right now, I'm talking to you. I want to have an open and honest conversation with you. We're going to talk about the charts. We're going to have a look at what we've been trading like recently and what we can expect to pull from the markets in the very near future and even see if we can pitch some profits today. Yesterday, I can't remember who it was, and I apologize for that if you're live with me today. Yesterday, I did some analysis on Great British Pound Japanese Yen for someone. I did say we're a little overextended. If anything, only look to short, whether we're range trading or going short as a general, I would only look to go short. Well, if you actually have a look at how Great British Pound Japanese Yen ended up yesterday, that analysis was on point from when we spoke about it. And I'm just going to go ahead and get you the screen share here. There we go come across uh you can see as in this is on the one hour chart here on great british pound japanese yen this is when we were live yesterday we just managed to pop up 
and that uh, heavy push to the short side. And we did see that kind of correlate across a number of different pairs. You can see the euro gained a bit of strength towards the end of the day. Uh, the Great British Pound generally lower throughout the day. US dollar showing a lot of weakness though. Uh, and that was given we did have uh, jobs openings. That's right, jobs openings missed their targets. You can see a lot of people short the US dollar based on that missing their targets. So it's very interesting to see. Because if Jolt's job openings is dropping, it means those jobs are being filled. If those jobs are being filled, it is a good sign for the economy, which means they may have to uh, may start thinking that everything right now is all in relation to where interest rates are sitting. So all these Jolt job openings, the, the PMIs, everything, they're all pulling in together to get an understanding of the global economy, uh, sorry, of the local economy. So then they're able to decide whether or not they want to hike interest rates, flatten interest rates, or even drop interest rates. But that's all economist talk, right? I'm going to leave that for Aaron. Aaron gets very excited when we start talking about things like that. Who's going to be joining us? So make sure you stick around because Aaron's going to be joining us a little bit later today to talk about how Apple went into banking and how the tech sector as a whole is really starting to move it's money management positions, and it's quite interesting what he has to say, talking about a number of different companies which you wouldn't expect to. So stick around if you want to hear more from Aaron a little bit later, and this isn't a pre-recorded video either. Aaron's going to be joining us live in the studio, so you're going to be able to ask him whatever you want to ask him. Without further ado, without further ado, let's not waste anyone else's time. We've talked about AFL. We've talked about sports. I've already lost the interest of half of everyone here. Guys, if you're excited to get into some live trading, you want to do some live analysis together and you want to take some positions, let me hear you in the chat. Give me some love. Give me some energy. Give me some excitement. Let me take that energy and we'll move it into the charts. It's really hard to do these live trading rooms by myself, especially when I don't have the energy of someone else to bounce off of. So you guys are my energy today. So if you want to see a lot going on, you want to dive into these markets, you want to get an understanding of what on earth earth we're doing here at trade delicious show me some love show me some energy give that like button an absolute punch and talk to me ask away your questions i'm here for the next hour you have unlimited access to me for the next hour far away far away all right let's start us off where should we look Aussie dollar been extremely weak throughout today is this correlating yeah we're looking uh, reasonably weak i oh, know the japanese yen just strong that's right, Japanese yen strength. Look at that. John, thank you very much for the little YouTube. Who's live trading? I'm live trading, Seasonk. That is me. I'm live trading. Good morning, John. It's good to see you. Um, yep, this is going to be me live trading. Very excited for it. Guys, if you didn't see, a little cheeky, a little cheeky. <laughs> this is very out of left center. We started a TikTok today. Trade Delicious officially has a TikTok. We already have a Twitter account, but we now also have a TikTok. So if you are on social media platforms with brand new accounts, Trade D Media, at Trade D Media for Twitter and at Trade Delicious Media for TikTok as well. Brand new accounts. So go through and, uh, and have a look. Maze, welcome in. Come through the Fiverr's email. What is Trade Delicious? Welcome in, Maze. Maze, Trade Delicious is all about an open community where we do live trading, we do education, we do competitions, we do interviews with successful traders. We're all about celebrating what it means to be a trader. Okay, we see so much of the stuff out there in the market, which is all about doom and gloom. You either with Bloomberg and CNBC, where it's dead serious and you need an economics degree to understand what they're saying, or you're stuck in the dump with a lot of gurus who are teaching you the wrong things. So we're going to challenge the whole market. What are we doing? We're pulling all of the breaking news, the fundamentals, everything that you hear in the news, but you don't quite understand. And we're bringing it into a relatable and enjoyable entertainment arena. And that's what Trade Delicious is all about. About. So not only are we going to teach you about different economics, are we going to trade live, we're going to teach you how we trade, I gave everyone a run through of my strategy yesterday, but we're also an open community where we're going to be doing little fun games, we're really going to be interviewing some fantastic people like we've already done with Don Dawson, Louise Bedford, Mandy Refsanjani, um, and we're just going to bring a smile to your face all while doing it. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, the beauty is, and coming just a little bit closer. The beauty is it's completely free. We do everything for free. So 
That sounds like something you can be a part of. Welcome to Trade Delicious. Greetings from Texas, Dr. Bay. Greetings to you, my guy. You take Your take on New Zealand, I wrote it news a few hours ago. We appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Uh, I'm not on Discord, Dr. Bay. We don't have a Discord just yet. Once our community grows a little bit more, I think a Discord community may be um, possible, but not yet. We're going to hit a couple more targets on YouTube and on social platforms first, and then we'll start looking to bring in those more interactive uh, interactive communities. Okay, thoughts on New Zealand dollar? Yes, we've moved a lot today, right? I was just looking at the Japanese yen, but you're 100% right. Let's go ahead and have a quick little look at the heat map on which we see in the FX pairs here. You can see US dollar remarkably weak. However, nowhere near as weak as what we've seen through the Aussie dollar. So much selling pressure coming through that Australian dollar today. Uh, it's kind of a follow-on from... Uh, what we've seen yesterday with the interest rate hike, the fact that we're leading into a, um, excuse me, I just got completely distracted there. The fact that we're leading into the FOMC meeting, I think people are starting to pre-position themselves ahead of that meeting. And the fact that we've been overextended based on some of the data we've had through the Aussie dollar, it's giving them an opportunity. I'm looking at the uh, wrong chart here. It's giving them an opportunity to potentially fade this off the top an extended market moving into what could produce more strength for the US dollar. Very interesting to see the way the chart's moving right now really flat proper rangy day we've spoken about this in so many live streams together guys if you see a push higher a break today's high a fail to hold a break of the day is low a fail to hold and then another break of the day's high a fail to hold it does not you can't get any more instructions that this is going to be a sideways day and you can see that it just has been up here would have been a beautiful spot to fade down here would have been an absolute magnificent spot to fade. The reason of that is that what I just described, right? A break lower, fail to hold, break higher, fail to hold, break lower, fail to hold, break higher, fail to hold. It's just yelling inconsistency and everyone is just crying, right? Uh, really beautiful thing to see. Now, thing of beauty, I'm not going to trade it. <laughs> I'm not going to trade it because we've already gone so far today and we're edging ever so closer to the, uh, we've got a lot of news for the US dollar today, okay? So we've got the ADP non-farm employment change coming out in about three hours. Then an hour after that, we have the ISI, uh, ISM services PMI. And then about four hours after that, we have the Fed monetary policy meeting. <laughs> so if you're a US dollar trader, welcome to the morning. I hope you enjoyed your coffee. It might be better to just come back tomorrow. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit crazy out there. Keep your eye on that. Damon, guys, come on, like the video. Damon, welcome back. I hope you're having a fantastic day and thank you for the enthusiasm. Guys, listen up to Damon. What's going on? Come on, join in. Devanish, Devanish Guatama Buddha. Sorry? Sure. <laughs> uh mate thanks mate what an intro subbed oh i'm glad you uh i'm glad you enjoyed it so will you or others be covering scalping day or swing trading i am a day trader um realistically i'm scalper okay my, my positions can go for like the whole day but most of the time they're in and out uh, I'm, a, I'm a scalper. So we're going to be looking in the market today to see if we can find some scalping opportunities. Uh, we are going to be looking at some investing type content in the very near future. Uh, but we're going to be right now over the next couple of, uh, actually over the next hour, we're going to be sitting down together and we're going to look through what opportunities I can find on the chart today to trade. Right? I'm just letting the, the play out just a little bit here before I get involved. Then straight after I'm done trading for the hour, Aaron's going to join us and Aaron and I are going to have a big in-depth conversation. And this is a conversation I think a lot of you will be having uh, over recent times on why Apple's gone into banking and what we can expect from the tech sector in the US and how it's going to change or revolutionize the banking sector. So Aaron's got a lot of information to talk about this very soon. But for now, we're going to trade. Are you a profitable trader and for how long? And is that a possible footer everyone, bro? Sorry, I don't understand the end of the question, but profitable trader, yes, I am. Uh, I've been a profitable trader for a little over four years now. So um, 
yeah, when it, when it broke consistency, <laughs> because it's very easy to become consistent, but profitable is the, I term profitability, the moment I am making more money than what I lost in the beginning. All right. So you got to recoup your expenses. Uh, so a little over four years ago, very, very marginally over four years ago, uh, is when I first turned the table on profitability. And then I've been at everywhere since um, for finding the five percenters where I became a funded trader at the five percenters. And then we fast forward a little bit more and I became a senior analyst at the five percenters. Now, most of you know me from the fivers because we've sat down and we've done portfolio analyst meetings and I've taught you a bit about trading or helped you and coached you throughout your trading. And then we've bared fruit into Trade Delicious. So short answer, yes, Damon. Um, I believe you're asking, is it possible for everyone? Yes, in an essence. Whether or not it's actually possible, absolutely. Will everyone achieve it? No. Um, Possible possibility, yes. There's possible like there's, there's a possibility I go on to be an Olympic swimmer from here. All right, maybe the odds aren't in my favor given my personality traits and given the fact that I'm not in shape. But there's a possibility, right? There's nothing stopping me from becoming that Olympic swimmer. I just need to put in the hard work. Same thing with trading. Okay, there's nothing stopping me from having a mad career change and all of a sudden becoming the president of the United States. Maybe because I'm not a U.S. citizen, that won't happen. But you know, theoretically, if I put in the hard work, I could get there. But will people do it? That's another story. Your strategy video, it's that you be all and end all, and I will watch it today. Sorry, I meant is it possible for everyone? Sorry, I don't understand. Your strategy video, it's that you be all and end all, I will watch it today. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little confused on what you're asking there, Damon. Fivers is a prop fund. Do old prop firms still exist? And do they have the same challenge and risk parameters, bro? Uh, Prime Minister of Australia? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, they do still exist. Absolutely, hedge funds still exist. You can still trade on a trading floor and, and trade. There's plenty here in Australia. There's plenty all over the world. And there's different companies, which we may be doing some work with in the very near future, which uh, run very, very similar to traditional hedge funds. They are still a thing. Uh, I think... You, you find them more in options and futures sectors rather than uh, rather than forex and CFDs. CFDs are they're very easy to uh, to really build a business platform from. Uh, whereas when you're going down futures or equities and, and you're on market or options, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated in the risk management side of things and and the licensing and the leveraging. Uh, I think people prefer to have their traders in house. Uh, when you're trading FX, your retail traders, we can expand that market really to to everyone all over the world being in such a technically advanced generation. But uh, yes, your strategy video, is that your real strategy or just a beginner level? That's my real strategy right there, Damon. Uh, that is my strategy through and through. I explained that and you're gonna see me trade right now. All right, let's get into it. Guys, there's another 36 of you in here. Damon, I absolutely love how much you are talking in your energy right now. I'm frothing it, but guys, where's the other 36 of you? Let me hear you, come on. Get involved. These interactive live streams are all about being interactive. Otherwise, I might as well just do this as a pre-recorded video. So if you are here, you want to talk about something, you want to share some knowledge, you just want to have a laugh, make sure you're letting me know. Make sure you're talking in chat so I can get to them and I can chat with you. Let's get in some charts. What do you reckon? Let's dive in. Uh, Aussie dollar, Japanese yen straight away. Right, Japanese yen been extremely strong. Not too sure why. I'm going to have a quick scan to try and get an understanding on why. Do any of you guys know why the Japanese yen has been extremely strong today? Have I missed anything? And is there something I should be aware of? Or is this that whole safe haven asset really coming back in, starting to reel back in? given the fact that we do have the FOMC meeting coming up today. So a lot of people just flooding over to the Japanese yen in expectation for the volatility in the US dollar. Is that what we're seeing? But I don't know. Let's see what happened. You've already liked John. You're fantastic. Nikita, thank you. No, thank you. This is very interesting. I'm testing your strategy right now on US dollar Japanese yen. Good on you, Nikita. Yeah, go through it. Nikita, it's very important to understand. Okay, very important. If you have set take profit, st set stop, Sorry, <laughs> set take profit, set stop losses, and use trade fix that. Uh, it might still show profitability, but but not by much. Okay, it's really important that you understand when back testing. I want you to use even if you're using Trading View and use the replay feature. Okay, the replay feature up here where you can come back and then you can click play. 
get an understanding of what the chart's telling you, what the volume's telling you, and then act as if you would trading live. If it's going against you quite aggressively and it's already ripped through the area in which you deemed to be the rejection area, get out of the position. I understand you may, you may still have a lot more room to your stop loss, but dude, just cut it. Cut it. If it breaks through your area of analysis, it means your analysis was wrong and the market is moving against you. It means your original analysis in which you bet your money on is now wrong and you still have the chance to get out with half the lot of what you wanted to risk, right? Half the loss, um, 100% cut loss. Cut, cutting losses will... Most people who are just break even or maybe even a little bit less, like consistently losing, but not by much, cutting losses will be the one thing that will just revolutionize their profits. Um, I've seen it plenty of times before when they start to learn how to cut losses and press that close button when their analysis goes wrong rather than just holding on to the stop loss, their profit margin just goes through the roof. You've been trading on the one hour for more than two years right now about to turn to the table trend strategy. Well, my strategy is quite the opposite. <laughs> you know the the title of my strategy, but um, interesting. Uh, give it a go. You never know. If it what well, look Nikita, if it's been working for you, training on the one hour, and it works for you, and you understand it better, stick to what you're good at. Just because my strategy works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. If you haven't already, your strategy fits me and my lifestyle, and it's very interesting. I've worked already with the sessions. Oh, well, there you go. If it fits you, then fine, fair enough. Explore it, build on it. You know what? Make it even better and come back to me and say, Jordan, your strategy is shit. I absolutely redone it here. Look at this. And uh, and I'll give you a medal, good sir. Honestly, if people can go through and, and improve my strategy and show me where my weak points are, even better because it's just going to improve my performance. Um, anyway, yeah, Aussie dollar, Japanese yen, very extended to the downside, right? We're, we're really pushing down a lot of strength coming into the Japanese yen. I'm under assumption, to Laurie, we're both the same. No clue what's going on. I'm under the assumption that this is going to be a risk off move, right? A bit of a push towards everyone being like, hey, US dollar is about to go nuts over the next five hours, which it really is. Um, let's get in the Japanese yen. Let's get a little bit safe. Let's sit back. I can see that taking a bit of place, which leads me to not want to fade it because I think it has a, a fundamental bias behind it. Usually if something has a fundamental bias behind it or I can, I can draw general knowledge to the idea, I don't like really trying to get uh, on the opposite side. So we need to keep that in mind and we need to be aware of that. Not going to look to trade the Japanese yen. Ideally, I'd like to avoid trading the US dollar, but if opportunity persists, I will take it. I have three hours until we have the first element of news, but I'm expecting the US dollar to go sideways from here on out. We may find more opportunity in indices like the FTSE today. Stay hydrated, guys. I'm absolutely giving my throat an absolute workout. Make sure you're staying hydrated. I know you guys aren't, but... Woo. Okay, back to it. Uh, Euro US dollar. Looking for a short. You're looking for a short or you feel like it's going for a short? Ooh, I like it. A right, bit extended, slow down, drop in volume. Hello, hello. I see you. What are we looking at here? Oh, ooh. Um, wow, wow, wow. I think I'm with you, my guy. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I might be with you. That rejection high there. Okay. Yeah, I, I see what you're looking for. I do. Um, the question is, you know, we, we had Euro news just as I went live for about half an hour ago, right? The unemployment rate coming at 6.5%, so better than expected. We're expecting 66 .6, and we don't have anything until 10.15, which is two and a half hours away. This, this kind of one, two, three movement right here. So the first the first climb there did have an increase in volume, but this one, I mean that's that's a 
exponential decrease in volume right there. The, the divergence between there and there. A uh, bit of a sell volume popping up as well in this drop down. We're testing this is the Monday high. Uh, no, the Friday high of the US session. Is this a... Oh, that's, that's the point of control right there as well. Did we tap the point of control? We literally did. I like it. I think I'm going to join you. I think I'm going to join you, to be honest. Guys, make sure. Should have done this at the start. Anything we do say or talk about here in the Trade Delicious live stream is for educational purposes only, all right? Any positions I take, please do not try to replicate them. Any analysis that I give, please do not base your analysis or, or your money on them. It is not financial advice, nor should it be. Always do your own analysis. I do everything I do here at Trade Delicious. Everything we do here at Trade Delicious is for educational purposes only and entertainment purposes only, okay? Please do not be taking us as rituals or anything along those lines uh, because you will lose your money because nine times out of 10, especially when I trade with sell, when we trade, we go against each other and one of us loses. But uh, yeah, it's very important you guys understand that. Please do not try to replicate these positions. In saying that, I'm gonna look to, uh, to take Euro to the downside here. Now, usually, I'd be ambitious, right? We push up into a good area, drop in volume, blah blah blah. Um, three hours, I've got, I've got three hours at maximum to be holding this position. Um, twenty-two is going to be ten, so ten fifteen. So about there. That's my cutoff time. All right. So no matter which way the trade goes, that's my cutoff time. That's where I'm getting out of this position. I don't want to be anywhere in this position later on. Um, yeah, this is good. This is good. Nice, solid trend. Push the downside in volume while we continue to push higher. Unconvincingly, might I add, in price action. This is not a convincing uptrend for me. Uh, you like to see something like this in a push higher. This is just a little bit meh. It kind of seen a slow turnover opportunity. So we'll keep an eye on it. Into, uh, into this area here will be our first take profit. If we manage to get down here, that is, we'll look to take 50, about 50% 50 off, not five, not five. I'm looking for 50 if we manage to get down here. There you go. We found a position. Hallelujah. How are we feeling? Big shout out to you. Uh, is it Sekonk or Kekong, how do I pronounce that? Am I pronouncing that right? Big shout out to you for calling out the Euro trade. Jordan, does Fivers actually pay up serious money and have they paid over 1 million this year in profits? Damon, absolutely they pay in real money. You know why? Because before I was an employee at the 5% and I was a trader who was getting payouts, okay? So absolutely you get paid real money from the Fivers. They're all real accounts. I can put my life on that hands down, okay? Uh, they pay up and they pay out well. Um, terms of how much they pay out, that is something I'm not allowed to disclose. Uh, I've signed an NDA, so um, unfortunately I can't talk on anything like that because of the privacy of our traders and the firm itself. But yes, you can make a lot of money trading with the Fivers. Yes, it is real money. Yes, they do pay out. All right, even ask people like Scruffy Trader, for example. Um, look, there's heaps. We can go an endless list of different people that, uh, that can prove that. Yes, absolutely, they pay out. Basically, can traders actually make that sort of money through prop firms? Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Both is fine, whichever you prefer. They're just a nickname. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, you can you can make money through firms. Absolutely. Yeah. The 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 restrictions that you get are I can understand why they can be seen as a negative. Right, and, and going from a retail perspective on your own account, the freedom to do whatever the hell you want and trading on ridiculous leverage into a tight, firm area where risk management's a real important piece. And, and I've had the privilege to sit on the other side and well, sit on both sides, right? From the trader's perspective, but also from the firm perspective. Um, I understand why those restrictions are in place from a firm perspective. It's, it's incredible. But from a trader's perspective, you just analyze your strategy 
based on those restrictions, okay? So if you add those restrictions, or let's not call them restrictions, let's call them guidelines. So I think it's better to use the language, positive language. If you use negative language, you're gonna have a negative monotone underneath. And then by the end of things, you're gonna end up blaming the prop firm for the reason you're not succeeding. And it won't be the case. Um, so it's really important that you keep that, that negative monotone out of the back of your head. But these guidelines that they give, they don't actually restrict a trader in any way. What they do is enforce risk management. And a lot of the time, it actually helps a lot of traders. You see consistency once they begin trading for a firm because it pushes them to think, stop thinking about profits. Stop thinking about everything else. And we've discussed this before. Stop thinking about how much money you can make and where you could get in three years and being a, an expat and running around everywhere. Think about survival survival first if you can trade for a year straight and survive happy days you've got what it takes you just need to tweak a couple different things but so many people get into it and they get trading they automatically think i'm going to be a millionaire and they think like that and they try to just get to that stage and yeah you know where do we go where do we go from there? I love the no, eva no evaluation type of firms. I will take 50% profit sharing and have access to capital with risk taken off of my savings. Exactly, Dr. Bay. Hi, bro. Can I ask a question? Ricardo, absolutely you can. Not a lot of restrictions at the Fivers though. Marisa, I think you mean guidelines. I think you mean guidelines, but no, you're right. Yeah, we, we try to give you as much freedom as possible while still ensuring that uh, that the the funds are safe, right? Affording that, ensuring that risk management is uh, in the right spot. You can ask me a question whenever you want, Ricardo. You don't have to ask. It's what I'm here for. You can pick my brain. Anyone else has any questions at any point in time? I'm here all day. Okay, I'm here Monday to Friday to be exact. So if you are new here, guess what? You get to see more of us. And it's not just me. You get to see Sal. You get to see Ruben, Michael. Unfortunately, you won't see Michael tonight unfortunately. Uh, he's got other commitments, but uh, hopefully next week we'll have Michael back to do the pre-market. What's happened What's happened when I pass all the challenge of boot camp in phases? You get funded, Ricardo. What do you mean what happens? You, you trade the same way you were on the evaluation account. The only difference is, is you get paid. <laughs> Thanks, mate. It's just I was watching videos and traders were saying how losers trade prop firms and are serious traders only issue their money yeah don't listen to everything you hear and and same goes for me right don't listen to everything i say you back have a look but uh i wouldn't listen to what everyone says no it depends on the top of prop firm that you're talking about if you're training at prop firms that are asking you to to make 10 percent or, or 20 percent in one month then mm, let's see but what are you working as in the Fivers? I'm a senior analyst, John. So um, I help a lot of, well, I did do live streams like this for all of the traders, but we've transitioned it over to Trade Delicious now. Uh, but I sit down, if you go through your dashboard, you can book in portfolio analyst meetings where we can review your trading strategy, your, your trading psychology, your trading plan, your trading journal, whatever you really want, or just have a sit down. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the ones you get called up in there. And then we do a lot of different other things as well. We've got Traders Day Live coming up in London, live event that you all can attend if you want. Um, so we do a lot of stuff all together. But yeah, I'm a senior analyst over there, Damon. I mean, all the 17 phase... Can I take a formula account or reset from zero? Oh, no, no, you just keep... So that once you've got to the max scale up, you just keep trading on that account, okay? It won't reset or send you back to zero or anything. Um, you just keep trading on that account. Um, once you do hit the max um, equity available, you know, once you get all the way up there, you can... We, we will open a communication route to see if there's anything that you can do further right we, we can see if you get more funding or whatnot um but no you, your account doesn't get reset once you hit the max once you get to the the end yeah, level you just keep trading at that level traders don't have the one month rule what do you mean damon no, no no i mean like the the really um aggressive like like for example the instant funded account is a big i'm a big fan of the instant funded account right and it's the one that i did because you could trade for six months and they just wanted you to make six percent in six months so i think it's gotten even more passive than that and that 
right there. I mean, if you can't do that as a trader, you shouldn't be trying to go for a prop firm in the first place. Guys, got to take off uh, take off 50% of the position here uh, on Euro US dollar, okay? That's a beautiful start to the trading day. We've just been chatting about prop firms and uh, the chart's gone and done what we needed it to do. So that's 50% of the position off there. Going to hold the stop loss where it is. We talked about this in my strategy video. You know, I like to hold it. So I've got all of this room to breathe right here. Uh, we're going to see what it can do. I'm expecting a bit of a bounce, you know, pushing up here. There's key areas where we are going to bounce. So I'm going to expect a little bit of a bounce before a continuation to the downside if we manage to pull it. But no matter what, we break even. Actually, I think we're a little bit in profit, little bit in profit, no matter what happens here. So beautiful, beautiful. Gold short, mates? You reckon gold's going short? Oof. Heavy influence with US dollar. Um, if people are getting a little bit worried about where this FOMC meeting will go, you may see a bit of influence come into gold. A bit of people get in there the same way we're seeing with the Japanese yen. So let's keep an eye on it. But um, sitting at fair value right in the center of the day today. So I'm, I'm not going to touch it, but uh, I'm not sure your analysis there. Are there people that have gone through all the stages and now have a 4 million account that they are using? Ricardo, unfortunately, we're not allowed to discuss. Um, you're better off asking Sol, the CPO, next time he's on because he'll know exactly uh, what he's allowed to say. <laughs> and uh, it's very... I, I don't want to get myself in trouble for, uh, for releasing information because a lot of our traders also want to remain discreet uh, with a lot of the stuff, so... Um, unfortunately, I can't talk about individual accounts or, or different, but we do have traders trading seven-figure accounts. I can tell you that. I think I might get in trouble for telling you that, but we we do have uh, we do have big traders. Okay. How much do you think is a monthly profit percentage for a trader? How much are they risking, Enrique? Are you on a retail account risking one percent per trade? Are you on a funded account? Are you on a retail account risking 0.1 percent? Look, I think what's really interesting. And something to go off, and this is what I've always based my trading off, okay? The best of the best traders in the world, the best of the best, the guys who come in consistently year after year and do extremely well, you know what they average out? You know what they average in returns over their career? About 25%, 25 to 30% per year. Yes, sometimes they have 100% year, but sometimes they also have a negative 30% year. They average out about 25% return of their account per year that's the best of the best i know people that try to attempt to do that month after month after month now i know people that achieve it i do i know some people that really do achieve it but when they hit their drawdowns they're big they're big drawdowns i risk really small <clears throat> i aim to make two to three percent a month a target to make two to three percent a month i don't always hit it sometimes i exceed it okay um it all depends on risk management. It all depends on trade frequency, setup confidence, account size, million different things that go into play. So not the challenge you recommend instant funding of some is profitable? Damon, my the, the one I recommend the most, the one I went through and the one I still trade to date is the instant funding only because I have the utmost amount of confidence in my ability to continue building that account. When I look at some of the other accounts and look at some of the other firms, I don't know if my strategy can really perform based on the restrictions that, that, that are asked, okay? Um, so that's why I like the instant funding because I know, I know my strategy can achieve what it's asking. No worries, Rick. Attila, what indicator are you using on chart? Attila, this is a session volume profile. You do have to have a TradingView premium account in order to uh, to use the session volume profile, uh, but that's all it is. Scaled to 100, okay? Um, so once you are do have it on, the row size, I've scaled it to 100. No worries at all. Happy to help, Dame. Let's have a look. Can I just do a little cheeky... Just a little bit of music. A little bit of music in the background. What do you guys think? Nah, I don't like it. <laughs> uh, all right, that's Euro US dollar. That's moving pretty flat. 
Aussie dollar, Japanese yen still continue to the downside. Don't want to touch that Japanese yen because something's going on. Something's pushing in it. But that's what works for me, Damon. That, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. It's just what works for me. It's always important to understand. Do I use, I don't use the fixed range volume profile. No, um, I just use the session volume profile. Maze, how does volume work for Forex and series? So it's all based on tick volume. Uh, so it's all based not on size of orders, but on how many orders are coming through, right? And it depends on the brokerage you're using. It'll give you different data. Uh, it tends to get an, a reasonably accurate hit rate, right? Not as much as what you'd see from a centralized um, place. But um, it, it's I've tested and traded it for years and it still worked for me and still delivered me an edge. So I still continue, continue to use it. Uh, but yeah, no, it's not as authentic or um, impressive as uh, something trading, you know, uh, on like a, the actual stock market. Um. You can use the fixed range profile if you just did from like the start of the day to the current price or, or yesterday's day. It definitely could work, but have a great day, mate. You have been nothing but exceptional. I absolutely appreciate you, Damon. Guys, I demand likes, please. <laughs> Me too, Damon. Guys, 44 of you in here. If you are enjoying this live stream, you're enjoying picking my brain and the conversations and the trades that we're taking together, I ask you consider hitting that like button. If you haven't already, come join the team. Come subscribe. Join us live Monday to Thursday every week where we do this. We talk about trading and we talk about economics. Some traders say they use footprint chart and book map. Should I consider it as a trader on YouTube claims to be the holy grail? Oh, the holy grails come out. Um, don't worry about holy grail. Uh, and There's no holy grail in trading. Anyone who claims there's a holy grail, you should stop listening to them instantly, all right? If they're claiming that's the holy grail, there's a good chance that they've been paid a fat load of cash in order to promote that product, and they're going to make a bit of bounce back cash when you go and purchase it. So uh, don't worry about that. That's the best thing I say. Build a strategy that works for you. Build your strategy around yourself. Build your strategy. Don't learn. Build. Build 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 that's what i'm talking about right there how many s assets do i trade the list on the right hand side of your screen uh you can't see it right now let me go ahead and do this for you this list on the right hand side of your screen right now uh is predominantly the assets i trade you'll see at the top it's actually called asian list i'm an asian session trader so uh they're the assets I'll look to trade. So we've got the Aussie dollar, Japanese yen, Aussie dollar, US dollar, the euro, US dollar, Great British pound, US dollar, US dollar, Japanese yen, and euro, Japanese yen. And then we've got our indices. We've got the Oz 200 or the XJO, the DAX, the Nikkei, the FTSE, the Dow Jones, and the S&P 500. And then finally, we've got gold thrown in there as well. Very rare. I'm mostly, and I, I've got to say, I mostly trade US dollar, Japanese yen, or the XJO, the Oz 200. Um, just being based here in Australia, I feel like I can get a bit more of an edge to get an understanding on market sentiment over here. However, right now I am shorting Euro US dollar. So uh, that just goes to say, but mostly during the Asian session, I'm looking at uh, US dollar, Japanese yen, or the XJO, or the, the Oz 200, should I say. But they're the assets I trade. Let me get back on screen so you can see me. Hi, did you miss me? I hope you missed me. Look at that. Outstanding, guys. For everyone that just come through and like, thank you very much. Thank you very much. 17 likes, smashing it out of the park. Can we break 20? What do you reckon? <laughs> Lastly, another conundrum. I mean, there's traders YouTube who say they're an ex-bank, say retail charts are for gambling and institutions piled. Morgan Stanley Goldman don't even look at price action. I know a lot of traders which currently trade at big firms which definitely use price action. Um, look, longer term, if they're investing, yeah, there's a good chance they won't use price action. But nine times out of 10, price action is where liquidity is filled. 
the market's full of opinions, the market's full of experiences and different journeys. And the beauty is everyone's got their own opinion and everyone's got their own experience and everyone's got their own journey. So you're going to hear a million different stories out there in the market. It's the way it is. That's why it's so important to build your own strategy. It's weird that it's so easy to lose money consistently, but the opposite is so hard. That's all down to psychology, Alma. Same thing, but odds aren't in our favor, right? The same way a roulette board puts the green uh, zeros on there. The reason they do that is to turn the odds against the house. Well, you've got to pay commissions. Turn the odd very slightly against the house uh, or for the house. What calculator do you use to know the position sizing? You'll use trading indices and X uh, gold. Uh, I don't use a position sizing calculator. Um, I use my brain. My, I've been trading it for so long that I, I, I have a pretty clear understanding on what equals what and what I'm able to trade. Uh, it's just a, a matter of calculations in my head. What do you think about predicting the market? Predicting the market, I think, is massively impossible to predict the market. That's what I think of that trading fighter club. I think it is impossible. And anyone that claims that they knew something was going to happen always said this, they're either delusional or they have insider information. Uh, it's impossible to predict the market. It is possible to have probability in your favor and place bets based on your probability. And then that probability becoming true, very possible. But predicting, nah. Nah. So glad that you... So glad to know that big banks is trying to use charts and price action. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Everyone uses as much information as they can possibly get their hands on. Everyone's always got it. Trying to start with an instant funding account and I keep getting not enough money pop up, indices and gold. Okay, so you've got to understand leverage then. Uh, that's going to probably be a leverage issue there, Charles. Uh, indices, especially with the fibers, indices and gold require more leverage than what your FX pairs do. So you'll see, um, you'll have to calculate your margin. It'll be a margin issue. If you have not enough money, it means you don't have enough free margin in order to actually open those positions. How do you calculate lot sizes without a calculator? Just interested. Uh, based on experiences, a lot of the time I know, obviously, what I need to, <laughs> I know what I'm risking through my, my trading journal. You know, I know if I'm running a 10 pip on US dollar, Japanese yen, that there's going to be like four lots or 4.6 lots. And from experience, you just learn what positions I'm doing what. Um, and over time, you just, you get to, to learn this thing. But the same way lot calculations, I mean, one lot is $100,000 worth of currency, $100,000 worth of currency. Then you divide it by the differences in price. Great session. Darren, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying this too. I mean, my throat's about to absolutely give way, but I am enjoying it too. We've got about 20 minutes until Aaron's going to join us to have a talk with us. So I'm super excited for that. And we're just going to sit here. I'm only taking the one trade today, I think. We're just going to sit here and uh, wait for the Euro US dollar to do something for us. Let's keep an eye on this chart for a little quick second. My water bottle's gone empty and my throat's about to cave in. So I'm just going to grab some water real, real quick. Keep an eye on this chart for me on a back in two seconds, okay? Ah, oh, right. There we go. Look at that. That was a quick little break. Did anyone get hurt? Did I miss anything? Anything crazy? No, you're still here. It's good. How much percentage should a bootcamp trader risk for a single trade? How much can you afford to lose, John? Big question. I always want to ask, always want you to ask yourself, okay? When you're taking a... Mm -hmm. I am amazed. Look. Um, John, when you're taking an evaluation account of any kind, okay, you'll blow the candles down for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. When you're taking a trading account of any kind, it's very important you do your due diligence moving into that account. It's very important you get an understanding of what type of drawdowns your strategy is capable of, you as a trader are capable of, and then in return, 
what do you have to position or how do you have to position your positions? <laughs> We're going to say position a lot here. How do you have to position your positions? How aggressive do you have to in order to not hit that max drawdown based on what you are capable of having in drawdowns, but also to still hit the profit target in the given amount of time. And that's where the sweet spot is. So I can sit here and say risk 1%. I can sit here and say risk 0.1%. Right? It doesn't matter because I don't know your strategy. What you need to do is look through your experience, look through your trading journal that you've had over time. If you haven't had one over time, well then go back and journal. Uh, start that right now. That's like red flag, red flag. You, you're never going to get anywhere without the data to back it up. Have a look over that. Have a look at what drawdowns you've felt before. What, How many trades do you lose on a trot? How long does it take you to recover from these drawdowns? Then position your positions based off of that data to know that you're going to be successful or at least the probability you're going to be successful trading that account. A lot of people will just go into an account and say, yeah, I know how to trade and then trade 1% one, 1 risk and then it blows up and then they'll just be like, well, I don't know why it blew up. I'm like, I can tell you exactly why it blew up. You didn't actually trade it bad. Your strategy just did its usual drawdown and you lost your account because you didn't provide the correct risk management approach. So how's that for an answer? <laughs> Attila, I need you to blow the candles a little bit harder for me because they're just going sideways right now. But yes, Mace, I am going to the Trader Meetup in June. June 17th in London, tradersday.live, Jordan 30 for 30% off gold and platinum tickets. If you want to come down and meet me, I'm going to be talking about Edge. I'm going to be teaching everyone. I'm going to do a little presentation early in the morning teaching everyone about Edge, what it is, how to use it how to develop one, and how to understand one. I'm going to be doing all of that in London, June 17th. So if you want to come around, come around. Nikita, trading is simple, but not easy. Absolutely. It's so simple. But yeah, definitely not easy. It tests you in every single way and in areas of life you wouldn't even believe where you could be tested from trading. It'll test you. Um, yeah. It, it revolutionizes your life when you get into trading. It's different. It's different. It's just different gravy. It's a different world. And uh, it's something to be uh, something to be worried about if, you, if you're new. That's for sure. It's a hell of a journey. Trading, it's a hell of a journey. All right, let's have a quick scan and see what else is going on over here in the markets, shall we? Um. S&P 500 moving to the upside early this morning, carried by the XJO, I dare say. No, XJO to the downside. Interesting. We had New Zealand dollar news, didn't we? We, we spoke about this just before. Yeah, the unemployment rate coming at 3.4%, expected 3.5%, and the unemployment change coming in at 0.8%, expected 0.5%. Hmm. Interesting. Other than that, there's no opportunity for me. <laughs> oh, come on. Who faded it? Be honest. Who faded it for me? We spoke about it. We spoke. The break above got nowhere. Break below got nowhere. Broke above got nowhere. The break below and look at us. Look at us running to the upside. Got nowhere. It is just yelling for a rangy day. Surely someone caught that move. I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't. But that's a beautiful... Look at the volume pump that we just gotten through there. I know it's only six pips, but for a lot of people, six pips is a lot. That right there was a beautiful move. What I'm nervous about is how aggressive that's playing out in the Euro. But let's wait and see. A bit of a volume pump too, which isn't ideal. It's all right. I'm going to hold on. We can hold on. What time are we looking? 7.57 moving into 8 p.m. Don't like trading in these more volatile times. I'm used to my Asian session where nothing happens and I just kind of sit here floating on a cloud. It's so much more entertaining. 
Reuters poll say that 13 out of 25 economists polled expecting the RBA to add at least more interest rates. Interesting. 13 out of 25 expected the RBA to keep continuing hiking interest rates. That's the Aussie dollar news right there. Where are we sitting in the following profile today? Yeah, we just tested that upper that upper bar right there is what we've just rejected. Uh, we've got to be careful coming back into here. We might see another rejection around this level. It would be around here if we were to get another rejection. Let's see. Guys, you have any questions for me or anything at all? Once again, let's keep this energy going. Can you give us your opinion about gold? I sure can, Enrique. What do you would what would you like? Right now we're trading in the middle of the day. Uh, I don't usually like trading in the middle of the day. Very slow to the upside. I think it's going to be very risk off until we get all the US dollar news coming out. And there's a lot of US dollar news coming out uh, over the next 10 hours. So um, I don't really have an opinion right now on gold. It's a very rangy it's trading, very similar to what the Aussie dollar is doing. Maybe a fade if you get up here or down here, we can look to fade these plays. Other than that, I wouldn't touch it with the 10 foot pole, to be honest. Uh, to be honest with you, Enrique, sorry. Um, yeah. Not not looking like the most beautiful pair. Yeah, that's that's where we rejected that bar right there. Almost. What direction would you consider US dollar CAD favoring? Once again, US dollar. US dollar, US dollar. A lot of fundamental data coming out for the US dollar in a moment. So picking a direction on it is tough. Right now, I'm favoring US dollar strength. Realistically, I'm not. I'm favoring more European weakness, and that's just based on what the volumes are telling me, okay? That's not based on fundamentals. It's not based on sentiment. It's not based on anything. It's what volume and order flow is telling me to, to go a little bit short here, which I've already done, and I've already banked the profits for, right? Um, now, I still might lose those profits out yet. I could take it right now and walk away with a profitable trade, but I am going to hold on a little bit longer. Um, I don't want to touch the US dollar. I know I'm in it but I don't want to touch US dollar. Once again, US dollar and Nikita. <laughs> I know everyone trades the US dollar. It's the big currency, but with so much fundamental data, I won't want to be entering any positions. This line right here is my cutoff. My cutoff, right? I'm not trading past that on any pairs because we have so much data due and all that data is going to get a little bit crazy. Attila, you've been back testing a strategy on Euro. Interesting concept that Asian session highs and lows are both side broken in London. New York session has like a 75% success rate until now. Yeah, it depends. Uh, strategies like that are so predictable that you might as well just build an algorithm, right? I mean, you might as well just have an algorithm. Realistically, there's, there's no difference between having an algorithm or you trading it personally so um if you want to test that type of strategy where it where it does things like that and you have set take profits and set stop losses just build an ea and let that test it and then let let that prove that it's it's not going to work in the long run until i, I find strategies that really go out there and they work they have a little bit more to them they have a little bit more to them a little bit more understanding a little bit more adaptability to the market because a lot of the strategies which you learn from a beginner's standpoint they have no adaptability at all i mean i think the first strategy that most people learn when they come into the market is moving average crossover right the moving average crossover is the best strategy in the world it, no <laughs> no pushing back down towards the uh the bottom side now which is nice to see if it can continue to move to the downside and get everything ready for for Aaron to come and join us here in just a second how you guys feeling how you feeling moving into this uh US dollar news yeah US dollar pairs are looking to boring and range bound there's a reason for that might just hold on until after the news have not learnt scalping yet to execute that style and take advantage of this environment yeah that's a tough one to be a part of. Learning scalping is a long, long journey. Um, and it's it's a real tough one to be a part of and, and to get a deeper understanding of. But yeah, you're going to want to... Uh, if you're not used to trading around these parameters, well, you shouldn't be trading around these news events anyway, especially as a beginner. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not assuming you're a beginner here, Maze. I'm just saying in general for anyone listening, trading around these news events is not good. 
if not predicting, then how you decide which direction to trade. Uh, I don't predict, I bet on probability. So I don't try to predict the market. If you try to predict, you come in with an expectation. If you have an expectation, you're going to cloud your mind into believing that you're right. You're going to favor something. You have an expectation, you leave yourself open for disappointment. And if you get disappointed, you're going to think it's something you've done wrong. Uh, prediction isn't necessarily a... It, you can use the word, but the meaning behind the word, right? It's, it's more of a bet on probability. So instead of saying, I predict the market to do this, come in and say, statistically, I think I have an edge of about 70% of the market doing this, All right? Yes, it's longer. Yes, okay, maybe you can change the words a little bit, but I think you understand what I'm putting across. So having that that mindset refresh, that, that if you say, I predict the market to do this and it does do it, it's going to shoot straight to your ego and to the point you're going to predict the market to do everything and it's never going to work. And you end up like one of the guys on Twitter who predict everything and then, only retweet the ones that work out and say, see, I told you pay $100 for my course, or you're going to be disappointed when it doesn't go your way. It's the reality of the situation, unfortunately, the reality in which trading is at the moment. So uh, I like to drop the word prediction, the expectation, get rid of any expectation because this market does not owe you anything. It is literally the same as getting a nice round bowl getting like a marble or a little M&M or a Skittle and just throwing it in the bowl, guess where it lands? You're going to say, you're, you're in that case. What do you mean? I can't predict that. <laughs> uh, probability. Probability will show you a reasonable area in, within that bowl that you're likely to end up based on statistics or based on what you can pull, gravity, the... the direction the angle the the shape right probability but um trade probability you'll reset your mind you may see an improvement in uh in your psychological aspect instead of having that expectation personal standpoint it's how i feel it's, it's what's worked for me it's what works for people i've worked with um might not work for you but i like to just get rid of that 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 certainty aspect in which so many people chase But I hope that answers your question. I hope it gives you a bit of an understanding of how I think. Euro is back into our fifty percent off spot. Um, actually, you know what? At this point in time, I might bring my stop in. Make it a little bit tighter here. Excuse me. I'm going to look to bring my stop in there. So we're definitely in profits now. No worries at all. I'm glad you... Uh, look, you might not agree with me and that's perfectly fine. We're an open community and we all share different ideas and ideologies here. Um, but that's that's how I look at it and, and that's how I see it. And you don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me at all. You might sit there and think, Jordan, you're an absolute knobhead. No, fair enough. On your bike. Like, it is what it is. And there's, there's plenty of times where I've listened to market professionals and I've seen the track record of how good these guys are in trading. And some of the stuff they say, I think, is absolute gibberish. It happens, right? It's all opinion based. It's whatever works for individuals. And that's what we're about celebrating here at Trade Delicious. It's why we're getting so many different people come on and talk about their processes and, and their stories because we're here to celebrate what we are as traders. We're here to celebrate what it means to be a trader and the journey that we take to endeavor to be a trader. Uh, it's a hell of a journey and doing it alone sucks, which is why Trade Delicious is here. Not necessarily just to help you, we will do our best to help you along your way, but also so you can laugh, you can smile, you can look back on the journey and be fond, full of memories, full of laughter and full of happiness along the way. We're gonna be doing meetups. Um, we've got obviously Traders Day Live in London, uh, later this year, but we'll be doing more meetups in the future. We're going to be doing different webinars. We've got a little tournament up and coming. That's a little sneak preview that you guys shouldn't know about just yet, but I'm going to tell you because I got the information. A little tournament up and coming for you guys. A uh, little little forex trading tournament where the winners going to get some uh, some accounts. That's all I'm going to say, right? Just build a bit of hype for you if that interests you. You want to get into a bit of a forex trading tournament. You want to feature here on Trade Delicious. You want to be a part of the Trade Delicious team, be a part of a tournament. It's going to be up and coming very shortly. So keep your eye on for that. Euro is moving quite nicely here. All right, let's see. It looks like Attila's finally started giving it 
a harder blow, which is nice. <laughs> Finally starting to move this back towards the downside. It's what we wanted to see. Let's see here. Um... You're using ICT strategy? No, sir. I saw a Quasimodo method on your website, which looks like a simplified method of ICT. Christoph, I do not use ICT. Um, you probably saw Saul's or um, Gil's strategy, and that was uh, long before ICT was a, was a thing. ICT <laughs> took a lot of supply and demand concepts and made them his own. Um, which uh, marketed it like a genius and it's gone out and, and done well. Uh, as most people talk about it now, it went viral. But um, no, I don't trade ICT. I, I think it's remarkably similar to just supply and demand concepts, but uses different language, which tends to attract more people. Uh, personal, personal, once again, personal opinion. Uh, but no, no, I don't trade those techniques. There we go, finally broken out there. This could be a good area to look to take a little bit more off, but I think I'm going to hold it. Just the way we're running, I'm actually going to bring this into break even now. So we are guaranteed, I won't say guaranteed because you never know with slippage, but we're looking pretty good to take profit out. This is going to be my next area to look to take another 25% off. So that's our next target spot, okay? Wow, didn't know you were short the euro dollar. Why exactly? Because we're at a resistance level. That's not a valid reason to short. We are trading above the higher low on a daily chart at 0, 0, 0.0908. 0, Eric is freaking out. What are you doing, Jordan? Why are you shorting the euro dollar? Well, this is why, okay? Extension, push all the way up, right? Into Friday's high of the day. Really nice tested area there. Not only is it Friday's high of the day, but Thursday's point of control. Very interesting, right? Running across all the way there, we've had an aggressive extension push into this area before we have fundamental news, right? There shouldn't be this risk on prior to news. Pushing up, massive drop in volume while we continue to climb higher into that area. Beautiful little scalping opportunity. So Eric, wow, outstanding. No, nah, no, nah, just simple technical analysis. That's why I've gone short there, Eric. I hope that explained it in a clear manner for you. But we're completely risk-free. We've already banked 50% of the position. We're happy. Happy days. Nice. I'm going to take the order block strategy and name it after myself and become internet famous. <laughs> yeah, John, your words, not mine. But yeah, it's similar. It's very, very similar. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. He, he's, he's added his own little things to it and he's got little edges and, and obviously the way he teaches works, right? And we see a lot of people trading ICT concepts uh, at the firm as well. It, it tends to, to work for, for a lot of people. Um, because it is supply and demand trading is, is a really good way of trading. Um, it's just a, just a different, different type of supply and demand trading, I guess. It's all in that, in the same aspect. Uh, what do I need to do here? Very soon, Mr. Aaron Collie is going to be joining us. Who's excited to hear from Aaron again? I know I am. It's always fun to hear from Aaron. He makes uh, economics sound so interesting, which I might add is a really tough job to do. Really tough job to make economics sound interesting, but he does it. He does it. We're going to be talking about the tech sector today, which I'm really excited about. My earphones are also very, very close to dying. So if I just randomly put headphones on, don't mind me. I'd randomly change midstream here. Don't mind me. It's just because I think my headphones are about to uh, to disappear on me. But that's all right. Let's see how we go. This is one position. This is my only position that I've taken during this live trading room. It is a successful one. Hello, brother. Hello to you, Osama. I'm doing very well. How are you doing? It's good to see you. It's good to have you in. Thank you for your warm welcome and thank you for saying hello. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, we've just taken the one position today in the live trading room, pushing to the downside. We've banked profits. We're locked in uh, by more than more than uh, 
break even now. We're, we're well and truly in profits unless we get any bad slippage in the event of some crazy news, which is potentially happening. But this red line on the right hand side of my chart here that you guys can see, this red line is my cutoff. Okay, that is the time in which I close all of my positions. I'd only have the one position open, but the reason I am closing all of my positions at that price is because of the amount of news we have due for the US dollar tonight. Okay, we're moving into ADP non farm employment change, into services PMI, into the FOM, into crude oil inventories, into the FOMC statement, and then the press conference at 4 30 in the morning for me. Um, all day today, it's going to be a crazy day for the US dollar realistically it's likely just gonna go whoop, 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 whipsaw all around the moment you think you in a good position it's gonna send you for a run it is really gonna send you for a run so uh look we'll chat about this a little bit more with aaron when he joins us <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit crazy it's gonna be a little bit crazy i can tell you guys that now uh i'm excited though i'm excited to see what what can happen and what can unfold Who's excited to see them? Is anyone trying to trade this? This is what I'm curious about. Is anyone trying or attempting to trade the FOMC meeting or the crude oil inventories or the ISM services PMI, the <laughs> employment? Which which one? You take your pick. Is anyone attempting to trade them? I really want to get an understanding. Smashing the water down. Stay hydrated. Ah, uh, here we go. I'll do a poll. Are you still attempting to trade tonight, despite the news? Here we go. A bit of a poll for everyone. Yes or no? Answer it truthfully. Be honest, the spread on those are crazy. No for me, mate. Absolutely. Good thinking. Uh, I wouldn't have done it just because of the spread, <laughs> but fair enough. Fair enough. Let's get, let's see what we can pull from this poll. Everyone go ahead in the chat right now. Make sure you vote on the poll. I want to get an idea. Are you still attempting to trade the US dollar tonight despite the amount of news we've got coming? I've said tonight. That's my apologies, right? It's night where I am. It's not where I am. So that's why I've said tonight. But believe me, um, that doesn't mean not for you. I trade it, but on a larger time scale. Attila, is that going to change your analysis on the larger time frame? Or are you still going to run for that? You're new and discovering your channel. Are you li live every day? Christoph, we're live Monday to Thursday. This time, Monday to Thursday, uh, we're here. So make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell, come join us, whether it's me, whether it's Aaron, whether it's Sol, whether it's Ruben, whether it's Michael, you name it, we're going to be here uh, Monday to Thursday. So uh, yeah, we're, we're here often, more often than not, more often than not. The poll, I answer yes, but only after the news. Uh, which which news though? You have an abundance. You have an abundance. And talking on news, right. Let's go ahead and pull Aaron. Aaron, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I hope you can hear me, first of all. That's going to be a Aaron, great start. Welcome I hope you're having a fantastic day. Stream. I hope How you doing? can hear me, first of all. That's going to be I'm a great How are you start. Guys? Welcome to the live stream. How are you doing? On where you guys are. Yeah, it's a little bit all over the shop. Hey, I've got a bit of a mix in... Uh, hang on, let's uh, make sure this is all working well. There we go. Can you just speak for me once more? Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. All right, Aaron, talk to me. We have... We've, we've been trading the euro, okay, today. I've been trading the euro, US dollar. We're in a position right now. And we're having an open debate, an open discussion with chat right now, so they say whether people are going to continue to trade the US dollar for the rest of today. And the reason my argument is that we should move away from it because we have the ADP non-unemployment, right? The, um, right. sorry, the yeah ADP non-farm employment change, the ISM right. services PMI, the crude oil inventories, the FOMC statement and the FOMC press conference all happening today. Very, very volatile, <laughs> very volatile time to be trading. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm right. In, I'm of the same mind that you are. This sounds like a really great risk off day, in my opinion. Um, we, we have a, an abundance of news, at least affecting 
the the U.S. market. There's not as much going on for the ECB or the Great British Pound or anything like that. But but here in the states, we're experiencing an abundance of news that's going to have an incredible bearing, not just on the currency market, but on the futures market, the equities market, the bond market will be affected by some of the news that we're going to be experiencing. So God bless you if you plan on trading today. I've just completely, you're on your own right now. I've just completely lost audio for a second. So <laughs> bear with me <laughs> while my audio <laughs> dropped out. You feel free to entertain the chat for just a second. I'm going to try to fix this audio, guys. I'll be back in two seconds. Sorry, guys. I've got no idea. We've had a, an abundance of technical issues that have just come through. Everyone's lost audio of you, Aaron. <laughs> and I've lost the audio of everything, which is a good start. Can you talk to me for just for a second? Yeah, no, we've lost, uh, lost your audio <laughs> completely as well. <laughs> what a great start. Um, okay, let's figure out why this has happened. Sorry, guys, moment. No. Aaron might be rehearsing. Yeah, Aaron's just rehearsing over there by himself. <laughs> right, the good news is Aaron can hear me. We can't hear him. Oh, I can't hear anything. <laughs> all right, you can hear me, but, um, all right, Aaron, I might, yeah. I think he just went and did that himself anyway, but I've lost complete audio, which is the, which is a big issue that we're facing right now. Guys, we're going to completely disappear just for a split second. We'll be right back in two seconds. Okay, 90 second break. We're going to fix this and we're back in literally two seconds. Bear with me. What is it that you have that is going to give you an edge over them? Now, that's hard to develop and it takes time to understand going to learn a trade here's my money let's click a load of buttons do some research you've got to be at the top of your game to keep performing okay okay i think i think i'm working all right we're back potentially guys are we <laughs> someone confirm <laughs> what an absolute horrific turn of events that was but however I do believe we should be back up and running. So confirm with me, everyone, please. Give me a wave. Say hello. We're working. We're back. Big celebration. Look at that. We may have lost a couple of people, but there we go. We're back. Fantastic. Thank you guys for your patience. That must have just been the absolute worst turn of events all happening at the exact same time. Moment of truth. Aaron, can you say hello? Hello? Hey, we're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. Look at that. We're back. I've got these beautiful big headphones on me now, but we're up and running. We're working. Sorry. Aaron, beautiful, carry on. Beautiful. What were you saying before I rudely interrupted? <laughs> no, no. I mean, before the sound stopped existing, I was just uh, I was just talking to John, John Titus. He was talking about some slippage that happened on a trade that was happening to him. And I was just saying, you know, you have to be so careful nowadays. There's so many products that are less liquid than you would think. And also during crazy volatility, you know, you get slippage. All of us 
have had it. All of us will have it. And I was uh, I was wishing him the best. Have you ever? Have but, you, do you remember a time where you've ever caught real bad slippage? Um. Yeah, I mean, I I was I was trading some stupid stuff though, so I, you have to be <laughs> you have to be so careful. Like, um, he there there are so many different products that you can trade, and I, I had a tendency to trade illiquid like penny stocks and that sort of thing. Oh wow! Okay. So I was probably yeah, it was it was it, I don't remember the exact ticker, but it was probably a biotech stock that went ballistic because they were saying, hey, we have this new prescription drug it's yeah, going to cure you went cancer a pharma and play all right <laughs> i oh know the one gosh, i know the was, one yeah it was rough it didn't lose too much but still it's just it's, it's horrible to see the chart go ballistic things start freezing they start pausing the stock because it's gone up too much. it's it's a whole thing yeah yeah i think a lot of people get very surprised look at that vanessa's so excited to see you. aaron's back um i think i think it's also it surprises a lot of people in fx as well even trading cfds that you can still cop slippage yes there there can be uh uh, levels to these products in which we trade but if a market moves fast enough it's not going to care where your orders are it's not going to care where your stop loss or your take profit it it doesn't matter (laughs) you're going to get printed at the next available price and there are times where it catches a lot of people off guard a lot of people and it's unfortunate Absolutely. And that actually feeds into what you were saying earlier when it comes to the news being traded today. One of the reasons why I stick away from these kinds of days is, you know, as soon as the news is printed, let's say you found an incredible entry on the euro dollar and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time's popping up. I don't care if that long is the most beautiful long you've ever seen in your life. If the number prints and it's bad, <laughs> then... <laughs> Who, who knows? Who knows where your stop loss will be? You you think you know where it is, but then it gets jumped over by leaps and bounds. And it's frustrating. It, it's very whipsaw-y. It's a, it's a dangerous space to be in trading when a number prints. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you mentioned something about a great entry point. So I thought it would only be good to pump my own ego and just show everyone on stream how well my trade's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, guys, I just wanted to give you a quick last little update on the position we've all taken. We've just finished the live trading room, uh, Aaron, and I was trading Euro US dollar to the to the short side where we managed to pick the top quite okay. nicely and, and the charts moving in our favor. So as we push down, they're going to be holding this position, guys. Just going to give you a quick run through before we go through. Um, 25% off, that's still going to hold suit. Depending on how we're acting around these areas, I might even take the full position off around this level. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Remember, red line cutoff date, not trading any time past 10 p.m. my time. New York time, what's that? You can tell me, Aaron, what is to uh, an hour and a half from now? Hour and a half from now is going to be 8 o'clock Eastern Standard. Eight o'clock. I'm not trading past eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. All right, that's that's me done from then on out. But I thought I'd give you guys a quick run through what a great little uh, live trading room session we've had. Now here comes the fun part. Here comes the real fun part, Aaron. What are we talking about today? <laughs> yeah. So I one of the things that has been incredibly exciting and incredibly confusing has been the current landscape. Well, we've been talking a lot about inflation in our educational series, and I wanted to expand on that and talk a little bit about risk off, risk on assets. We talked a little bit earlier about the news that's coming out today, and I said that this was going to be a risk off day for a lot of traders. What in the world does that mean? That (laughs) can mean, yes, don't, don't press the risk button, so don't click the mouse to buy and sell. But that also means traditionally in traditional economics on a fundamental scale, risk off assets do very well when interest rates are rising. So mm. products like gold, treasury bonds, um, defense stocks, the uh, usually stocks in the financial sector, all of these things, generally speaking, do quite well when interest rates are rising because they're safe. They're safe havens. We're day traders. So a, a number being printed at 2 p.m., may not always affect our trade if our trade is going to be 5, 15 minutes. But this is a really great collection of data to keep in your back pocket to understand what's going on in the economical climate. One thing that I found really weird, and I'm sure a lot of you guys find weird, is the fact that tech stocks are doing so well in a climate that's not, it's not good for yeah. tech stocks. 
Yeah, uh, I'm, tech I'm, stocks I'm, are yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy right now. Yeah. For 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 context, you know, uh, to date, the S and P five hundred is up like twelve percent. That's that's really impressive. The top five tech stocks: Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Google are up forty two percent year to date. That's that's astounding. That's yeah. I'm not sure we if that's legal in some parts of the well. world. Like we, it, it's it's that crazy uh, coming out of COVID. We where these tech companies like it, it may have worked well for them, right? Well, we, we took a lot of money okay. from a lot of people, but then everyone realized that most of these companies operate online, <laughs> and the technology is needed for other people to operate online. People like you and I to be able to chat to each other right now in front of all these beautiful people, right? This wouldn't happen without little microchips and without these businesses producing these things. So then we saw that boom after we we came out of lockdown, and everyone was like, all right, work from home's dead. It's done. We're going back in the office. It, it hasn't necessarily gone that way, has it? Most people have just kind of incorporated that now and people realize they actually enjoy spending time with their families who, who in their right mind. But it's that aspect of people are going, okay, I don't want to go back to the office now. I, I actually want to find this fine balance. And it's really interesting to say the S&P 500 is up because Ruben and I were talking about this a few weeks ago saying that I thought it was astonishing that the stock market was still printing green. Uh, given the the current climate, like you've mentioned, uh, who in their right mind is putting money? Who has the money to invest, first of all, uh, given that we're talking about everyone's complaining about food prices, everyone's complaining about fuel prices, yet there seems to be an astronomical amount of people going and investing in the stock market. <laughs> so it's going, well, something's not adding up. Either someone's just right. complaining for the sake of complaining, or someone's right. pumping the absolute hell of the stock market. I mean, what's what's going on? It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and and you know, I I the way I feel about it, and it, the way it seems markets have been for so long is, I don't know if it's necessarily new money so much as it's old money moving money from one product to another, right? Um, people just want to feel like their money is growing, and they don't want it to be eaten away by inflation. I mean, we saw last week in Great Britain. They printed an inflation number that was at ten point two percent. I mean, that is yeah, that's insane. Uh, the yeah. S and P five hundred, the DAX, uh, adjusted over adjusted for inflation, usually prints about a seven percent gain annually. So even if you were smart and you were conservative and you put your money where Warren Buffett said to put your money in the S and P five hundred, in the DAX, in the FTSE, you would still lose three percent of your cash. So. People are trying their best to beat that inflation number. And right now, a lot of the stock market is being seemingly propped up by the performance of these tech stocks. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's insane that the S&P 500 is up. But when you look at the weight structure of it, in other words, the there are 500 stocks in the S&P 500, hence the name. It's not divvied up. Uh, the S&P 500's value is not evenly distributed between 500 stocks. No. Mm -hmm. It's, there's a weight that's assigned to the most valuable companies. Amazon, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple make up 17% of the S&P 500, three stocks in 500. So if they do poorly, newsflash, S&P 500 <laughs> is probably going to do poorly. If they do well, then the chances are the whole of the market will do well. And so it's a very, very weird time to be a trader where you see companies like that doing so incredibly well. And then you see a company like, let's take uh, Wells Fargo, for example, or Charles Schwab, they're down 10, 12, 15% on the year. Hmm. And it's a weird space to be in. It is. Yeah. And let's, uh, I mean, talking about the, the text power right now, right? That, that ability to carry the market, which is what it's doing. It's Will it continue? Will I mean, we've seen little murmurs of more banks to potentially fail in the up and coming world, but we've also seen Apple <laughs> join Morgan Stanley. And uh, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, bad times it's so crazy. create revolutions, right? Bad times create revolutionizing right. thinking and, and new technology and, and exciting ways to move. But I didn't see Apple becoming a bank. 
Uh, I can say that honestly. <laughs> I I wouldn't have put my money on that. Now that right. it's happened, it kind of makes sense. It's like, well, yeah, that what a great move yeah. for them to make from a business standpoint. Whoever's making that yeah. decision, fair play to you, good sir. I'd love to sit down with you and uh, pick your oh, brain. But yeah, yeah. Where, where do we go from here? Yeah, Tim, Tim Cook is a—he's—he's he's a genius. He really is. Uh, and to your point, Jordan, in the past four days, Apple has well four days from them announcing that the bank account was open and available, a billion dollars in deposits have been made into that savings account. That's a—that's a billion with a B. Um, and so it's incredibly impressive to see where they've gone. As for whether or not it's here to stay, you know, never say never, right? The the market climate changes so often. But right now, we know that because they are actually making money, they're very attractive for a lot of investors. If you know, we're all traders here, but most traders I know have a variety of different accounts. I have a long term account, I have kind of like a swing account, and I have a day trading account. A lot of my long term funds are currently in tech stocks, not because I necessarily think that Elon is the greatest to ever do it. Or that Tim Cook is a prophet. It's just that they're actually they're actually making money right now. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that I would usually put money in, a good example would be something like Boeing. I can't, I can't, can't stomach it. And a lot of investors can't because you look at the financials, and Boeing has lost money millions upon millions, billions of dollars in the in each of the past four quarters. When you look at their financial, their actual net income statement. And when we look at something like Apple, and Apple has $200 billion on hand right now, if they want to, they could buy a small island. <laughs> and so when you think about it from that perspective, you know, they're out here and they could decide to buy De Denmark if they decide to. You want to put your money with those kinds of businesses, especially when you're a trader trying to park money in a way that gets you out of inflation, mm -hmm. lets you beat inflation. Yeah. Yeah, which which is a tough gig to do. I mean, inflation, like you mentioned, Bank of England shocked everyone, right? And I think I think it kind of shocked the Bank of England a little bit too. Uh, they thought they were doing yeah. enough to put these interest rates up, and then, uh, well, out of left field comes uh, comes this number, and it, it shocked a lot of people. It definitely shocked assets. But what's really interesting, and I've pulled this up on the screen for everyone to see here, is that correlation between the S and P five hundred and Apple stock, right? The the actual direct correlation between what we're seeing right now between those prices. So you can visibly see what you're talking about and how much Apple and, and Amazon and what was the other one you mentioned? Sorry, was it? Oh, so the, the FANG, Scott. So yeah. Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google. Yeah, the, the, you just see the weight in which they pull. When Apple does well, the S&P 500 does well. When Apple's not doing well, the S&P 500 not doing well. No surprise. So it's really interesting to just visually see what you're explaining there and, and to see that direct correlation. Apple right now trading at $168 a share, just over a little $168 a share. Its all-time right. high was back up in the 180s. Right. I thought this this announcement with with bringing this bank account out and especially considering the amount of money which was injected into Apple through that, we would see more demand yeah. for the Apple stock come into play. I, I, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say disappointed, but I'm a little bit surprised. And I know I've lost Aaron, so I'm just chatting to you guys now. I'm a little bit surprised. There, there we go. I'm a little bit surprised to see how um, little movement it's actually generated in the stock price itself agreed agreed i think that there's there are multiple things at play here like we were talking about before we have a lot of news that we're staring down the barrel of and i wonder how much that is making investors sit on sit on their hands it's it's a very odd time to be in the market and be very heavily leveraged in any one product so do I think Apple is going to beat their all-time highs this year? Absolutely. Am I sure that they're going to do it soon? I don't know. This move that they've made for this high savings yield account, one, it's weird. Who, who expects a phone developer to 
come out with the bank account through a bank which, that's which famous like, for yeah, which bringing out great returns by the way on their savings account. Four point one five percent. The <laughs> national average in the U.S. is 052 percent. Yeah, it's it doesn't even like that's that that's I, I don't have words for it. It was the same here um, in, in Australia. I mean, uh, our really? interest rates have gone up like everywhere else, right? But of course. while our mortgage rates have gone up very quickly, the, the bank savings accounts seem to be extremely timid in, in moving. <laughs> and then and then for Apple to Suspicious. just come out and go, hey, here, have four point one percent. I mean, <laughs> hang on a minute. I don't I'm not a big fan of Apple products, but all of a sudden they look a little bit more <laughs> all of a sudden I'm like, you're gonna give me four four percent. I mean that will outperform a lot of traders. <laughs> like, <laughs> it will. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I, Annual growth of four percent. You're not. You're not doing too bad on the long term <laughs> portfolio. Uh, but that's and that's the thing. You're not a big fan of Apple. I'm not a big fan of Apple either. But in order to even get this account, you have to have an Apple card. Mm. So you get the Apple credit card and you get all your rewards conveniently put into that high yield savings account. And then you get a couple of emails that say, "Hey, the iPhone 26 is coming out," and you know. You can, you can use some of these. Your, we can just send it to you. No hassle at all. Yeah. 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 Why do you need Visa? Apple to Apple. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's genius. So it's scary it, to see uh, where the way this can take uh, where this can take their worlds and and power. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, the, the the important word there, power. Um, but it's also you, we we see so many different movies and we always hear about big corporations in, in every movie right the bad guy like for example like jurassic park the bad guy is the big corporation who's going to milk everything for profit but they think so right. well do you think apple is on the track to be one of those movie villains or do you think they're just doing business so well that they're just doing business <laughs> like because uh, uh, i know that's a ridiculous question that i'm asking you right now but for me i don't I think just, it is i ever feel like they're edging to uh, when, when do they get too much power now, when, when, well, when is that well, too much that is the trillion dollar question right now apple's market cap is 2.6 trillion dollars that's more than over half the countries it's 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 so much money it's hard to fathom um I, I think that we're already seeing a little bit of pushback, at least here in the States and abroad. So I'm sure you guys, if you follow something like Microsoft, Microsoft has been very actively trying to acquire Activision Blizzard, which is a uh, video game developer that has done very well over the years. Mm -hmm. They're trying to bolster their competition against Sony. Well, because Microsoft is so big, several countries, several sovereign nations have had to say, hey, you guys can acquire them. No big deal. Britain came out just this past week and said, hey, we don't think it is lawful for you to purchase Activism Blizzard. We think you have too much of a market share here. And Microsoft, of course, they're going to fight that tooth and nail. They're going to hire the best lawyers Oxford has ever produced. Um, they're going to try to pay to get Winston Churchill reanimated so that he could fight on their behalf, I'm sure. But we're, we're already starting to see some of this curtailing and this pushback. Mm. Apple, we haven't seen as much pushback. They they have their own drama with their issues with Samsung, and I'm sure that's kind of the forefront that we see from them. But we're already seeing those kinds of issues from Microsoft. Even companies like Disney, and um, I'm natively from Florida. I'm, I'm up here in Ohio now, but I'm from Florida, and the governor there is viciously attacking their business because he believes that they have too much power in the state, and they can swing too much in terms of who gets elected where so we're starting to see more politicians uh stand try to stand up against these behemoth companies mm. uh, will it be effective it's it's hard to say he, he, the governor down in florida he's doing okay but it's hard to be doing well when you're staring down the barrel of billions of dollars mm. and on the other side of that barrel is a very 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 wealthy mouse that will do everything he can to make sure he maintains his profits. Apple is very much the same. 
yeah it's 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 interesting it's interesting to be walking through the door into this this new era and and how long until uh, i say how long until they're involved we already know big corporations have a heavy influence in politics right uh i mean most of their campaigns are funded by some of these cooperations so uh there's no bit in the eyelid around that but it's very interesting to see i was very surprised when england uh denounced the the blizzard purchase through microsoft i I personally am a fan of of the gaming sector and and looking at that and i was very surprised to see that and it was it piqued my interest it was like wow they you know that could have been a lot of tax money that could have been a lot of different but they've come through and they said no we want a competitive industry here we want people to come out of the uk new companies to come out of the uk and have a shot uh you guys purchasing this company is not going to allow that to happen and i thought well good on you first of all um right Second of all, I mean, the inflation came out the day later. Bad timing. Very bad timing. <laughs> but. <laughs> Very. But, not the, yeah, not the but, best. Um, no, it is always interesting. Well, it's it's an absolute uh, mind boggling. The, the beauty is that with everything we do here in trading, there's no right answer. We can sit here and we can discuss these topics for the next six hours. And guess what? We still won't have a conclusion on what we think. <laughs> it's just, just a million different ways. And that's why we love talking about this stuff. And that's why we like doing it here uh, live at Trade Delicious. So big shout out to everyone who's still tuning in. I know, well, I think we've captivated the audience because chat has gone silent. Yet the viewers have remained. <laughs> so I think everyone's just captivated right. in this conversation. They're just real brain picking. Guys, if you're still here, give us a wave. But yeah, no, that was, a it's outstanding. I always appreciate your uh, your analysis aaron and and coming in and having these conversations because it's so good and so refreshing to just hear these different opinions and these different statistics which you can give us cheers i, I really appreciate it and, and yeah i mean there's there's so much that's happening in the markets and there always will be at the end of the day we're just we're speculating just just like just like when we press the press a buy or sell there's there's only so much that we can that we can say do, do i know for sure whether or not Microsoft is in the right or wrong for trying to purchase this company, I don't. I, all, all I know is they're trying to do it and that things happened, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're just trying to look through the noise, see what we can pull out of here, these kind of little gold nuggets and make better trades and make better decisions moving forward for our accounts. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. There you go, Nikita. Yeah, there they are. Yan's still here. Good day, Yan. I you tuned go. your live stream earlier today, Yan. Good stuff. Xenox here, Darren's still here. Yeah, everyone's still there. Well, guys, unfortunately, we have run out of time. That is the Wednesday show for Trade Delicious Live. Guys, it was an absolute pleasure to have you join us in our live trading room. Quick update on that Euro US dollar trade, shall we? I haven't even been looking at it myself. Whoops. Uh, We're still trading in between the 50 and 25. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Guys, have a fantastic day. Tomorrow, we'll be back once again for the end of the week live stream. So this time tomorrow, make sure you tune back in. Trade Delicious right here on YouTube. If you haven't already, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Turn that notification bell on. Aaron, absolute pleasure, my friend. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Your day is just getting started. My night is coming to an end. I hope you, wish you all the best throughout today. And I hope you uh, don't get caught out by any FOMC statements that is uh, going to be lots. There's going to be lots. It'll be fun. Guys, thank you so much for joining us again. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Trade well and trade delicious. Thank you, guys. There it is. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. What is it that you have that is going to give you an edge over them? Now, that's hard to develop, and it takes time to understand. But that's why I want to challenge you. Instead of just going, yes, I'm going to trade, I'm going to learn to trade, here's my money, let's click a load of buttons, do some research. You've got to be at the top of your game to keep performing. So I think I'm going to sell the bike, I'm going to take that money and put it in a margin call, and then that'll give me money to buy. This is how stupid a new, well, me as a new trader was, because I was thinking like that money was going to turn into a new motorcycle. Well, guess what? That motorcycle didn't come that year, okay?